Welcome to the Whisker Weekly Podcast. This is episode four of season two. Uh, I will admit this episode here, I kind of rambled a bit. I do apologize in advance. Uh, Sometimes though, maybe you will hear a different side of me. Uh, But this is a very interesting episode uh, because uh, there was a case study put out by Nielsen discussing the buying power of Asian American females. And so, uh, you know, specifically where I live now in California, Southern California, California is a is a mecca for Asian Americans. And so uh, I can definitely and and me myself being Asian American, uh, I can definitely agree and uh, I, I see the, the, the similarities and I see the arguments that are being presented here. Um, I do hope you'll get something out of this. Again, I, I, I did ramble a bit, but there's still some very, very good information here, um, some st- uh, statistics, and furthermore, some ideas that Kelly and I do bring up and discuss. So stay tuned. Here it is. It is what it is. And this is the Wisco Weekly Podcast. Brown chicken, brown cow. That's Kelly Cruz, co host. I'm Dennis Wisco, your host of the Wisco Weekly podcast. Welcome to episode four. On this episode, we're going to be talking about Asian American females and their buying power in the United States. Uh, this is a case study that was put together by Nielsen, um, and there were about t- over 200,000 respondents uh, of this uh, case study. Uh, they were all Asian American and female, uh, and even more so, I, which could put a little bit of a slant to it. I believe they were all English speaking as well. Now, just a quick note, uh, you know, Kelly, there was I got a package in the mail. Um, this was probably about a probably a couple months ago now. It, it was it was kind of a, a very enticing package. It almost looked like um, you know a, a combination of. Uh, of a, of a Christmas card mixed with like a, like a FedEx package. And again, it was, it was, it was, it, it presented it in such a way that I definitely wanted to open it. Oh, okay. I thought maybe you were scared to open it. No, no. no. Okay. And that was the thing. Like I, I, I actually, when I saw it, I kind of put it off to the side and I'm like, I want to open it, but I'm not going to do it right now. And I sat on it for a couple of days and I finally, I'm like, okay, let it's me like open building it. building the excitement? Well, it, it's just one of those things. Cause I was like, no, I know, I, you know, this is. Do you is know g- who it was from? It, it was from Nielsen. Oh, it was from okay, it was okay. from Nielsen, and and so it I like I was looking at it, and I'm like I don't want to open it because I was like this is probably something that's just spam. It's like one of those uh, AAA selling me life insurance. I'm like okay, but it it was just presented very nicely. Okay, so I ended up opening it, and it was it was fairly personalized, and essentially they were asking me to participate in this study where I I would hold some type of device in my pocket. And this device then tracks like these frequencies, I believe, of uh, of radio, of television, but then specifically too of streaming, anything you would stream. Hmm. And I bring this up only because whatever Nielsen is doing, they're on top of their game. Like, yeah, like, and so, so so to go back to this study here, I I do believe that this study that they put together um, has some validity to it. Um, before we get to that, though, uh, here, we have a new segment here on the show. This is Lionel's Kitchen. You probably heard me talk about Lionel Killens in season one, but uh, we have a segment called Lionel's Kitchen where he's going to talk to us about some food. Um, and so we, we have Lionel here uh, that's going to be joining us. So first off, uh, Lionel, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, what's, what's going on, man? Not so much. Thanks for having me on the uh, Let's Go Weekly. Of course, dude. Uh, hey, so um, you're uh, working with you, you, you've been working with um, Asian food for some time now. Um, you're half black, half Filipino yourself, but specifically, uh, you're working with um, a lot of fishes and 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 pokey. I don't know is is pokey a genre of food? Uh, pokey, sure, you can call it a genre of food, but it's more of a it's, yeah, and and. From what I was, from what I know of it, it's you know, something that started in Hawaii, um, but it originated from you know the influences that they had from Japan, China, wherever. It's just you know it's raw fish that's cubed up, and then you kind of kind of mix it in with some 
some sauces, and so it's something that's it's something fresh that you could eat. Uh, it's very light and it's very uh, what uh, available because you know Hawaii has those o- the ocean where they just get fish. And so <laughs> Hawaii has an ocean. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, Is that what I said? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we, you know, I'm curious, why why did why is Pokey um, such a big hit right now? It's actually been a hit for, I mean, out here in Los Angeles, it's been a hit for, I, I would say at least five years, but I mean, in Los Angeles, it's very health conscious out here. People like the fact that it's very light. It's, uh, it's affordable, too. Um, it's like... It's, it's like sushi, sushi in a bowl to go in a sense, but without having to sit there and have to go through the cost and stuff. It's portable. It's very efficient for that. Okay. And uh, so, Lionel, uh, please recommend to uh, our listeners out there, what is a great fish that's currently in season and, um, yeah, what's just a great fish that's in season and that's healthy for, for people to get right now? I mean, a lot of... What's quite available is ahi tuna. Ahi tuna is it's it's always going to be, uh, especially out here in the Pacific Ocean and stuff. Ahi tuna, salmon um, from Canada is also readily available. You see these in your grocery stores or Japanese markets uh, out here, and so those are those are popular fishes that people like to uh, gravitate towards, or are very popular out here. Okay, cool. All right, Lionel, uh, sounds like you're out and about right now, so uh, thanks for joining us on the show here. Um, We'll have you back again, and you can talk more about some food. Sorry about that, yeah. Thank you for uh, including me in your uh, podcast. Great. Talk to you soon, Lionel. Thanks. All right, so that was Lionel Killens. Uh, Ahi tuna and salmon uh, are what are some choice uh, fishes right now, which actually is a good transition into the Asian American female um, characteristics and the fact that they are very much um, into a healthy living style, a combination of not just um, uh, food, but also exercise. Uh, so one of the things that this research study mentions is the fact that yoga has taken on the U.S. population by storm. Uh, and so so Asian American female, they're, they're very much into this healthy living style. T- to that end, it also mentions how Asian American female are into healthy food, buying it and cooking it, which I kind of do take a little bit of issue with that um, with that conclusion there. T- tell us more about that. Uh, have you have you been taking research of how many Asian American females actually like to cook at home? I mean there there's no device I'm putting in any uh, woman's pocket. Thank uh, goodness for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we could um, all be a little scared. Uh, but uh, you know, there's there's definitely a, a good number of Asian American females that I know that do not cook. Um, and now I guess you may have to break it down um, into age groups. I would say definitely between twenty five to thirty five. Maybe you can get into like twenty five to forty five. Um, Yeah, not a whole lot of Asian American female will cook. They're certainly into healthy living, um, but definitely not cooking. Um, So you're just saying they're more likely to either have someone else cook it, get takeout, or buy something that's ready-made. That's right. And if anything, I mean, this whole, like, pokey thing, that's, like, a a huge craze right now. Again, like, the whole, you know, it's it's, if it's not vegetarian slash vegan, then it's pescatarian. Uh, mm-hmm. But certainly there's, you know, you're not going to find any more, you know, a whole lot of meat eaters there anymore because it's just not part of the, you know, of, of, of a good diet. Um, so uh, I, I think what's interesting then is that when you start looking at, a, at the Asian American uh, female culture, you start to see how it is affecting the U.S. culture. And specifically, it, it, as I'm looking at the study here. It, it shows how there is, there's more non-Hispanic white households that purchase Asian-inspired foods more than Asian-Americans themselves. Hmm. Um, so this actually starts to tell a story then of how much influence 
uh, Asian American and specifically females have in our in our in our buying um, economy. Um, I think one of the things that, uh, as as we look at, uh, that's characteristic, and I can certainly vouch for this, um, is the fact that it says that. Uh, let's see, where is it here? Uh, Asian American women are savvy shoppers and brand loyal. 76% agree that if a product is made by a brand they trust, they'll buy it, even if it is slightly more expensive. However, 76% also agree their number one goal when shopping is to save as much money as possible. Would I would you agree? Say, I would say that's, that's pretty true. I, I mean, obviously, I'm not speaking as an Asian American female, but speaking as a female, I think that uh, as we start talking about the the car industry and the idea of trustworthiness and uh, trusting the people that you're working with, just like if you can trust the brand of the the thing that you're buying, or if you've been to a place before and you had a, a good experience, that you're more likely to go back. Yeah, it's. I think this this is a, a statement that's actually very much spot on. Because certainly um, Asian American females are very price conscious. Uh, however, there's also a familiarity that they have with specific brands already. So, for instance, um, you know, there could be a, a, a female who grew up in a household where uh, their parents were Mercedes Benz owners. And so, therefore, now that they're of age where they're able to afford a Mercedes Benz, it's almost by default, that's the brand they're going to go with. And yes, of course, then they're just going to be more price conscientious about it. So even if they were to look at a BMW or an Audi, and even though they might, that those other brands might be offering a pretty significant discount, there's not a similarity there. There's not a familiarity to, to you know, to, to this culture, to, to this, to this demographic. Right. They've had a good experience presumably they've had good memories in the Mercedes. And so, like you said, it's something they're already comfortable with and they already trust. Um, and so they're more inclined to, and, and, you know, maybe they already have an idea of, you know, from being around their parents, what good pricing is, or, you know, kind of what you're looking for. Um, you know, on the, on the flip side of it though, cars are definitely not something that um, the Asian American females are interested in. And it's it's affirmed in this study here where, you know, for them, uh, for for Asian American females, uh, again, a healthy living, um, be it with food or exercise and then travel. Um, You know, they're they're uh, apparently they're uh, one of the uh, big demographics that uh, often travel for pleasure or for work. Uh, And so that's that's an area they're willing to spend money on. Um, They're highly educated. Uh, I think another thing that I uh, that I saw over here is that they are also into politics, um, which is again kind of interesting. Um, and if you take a look at these uh, statistics here of some of the things that they've that they watch uh, when it comes to politics, is they are watching uh, CNN is one of the main networks that's that's up there. CNN is is a fairly moderate. Um, uh, news news outlet. So on one hand, while cons- you know, I, I think they they exactly fit the mold of this quote unquote fiscally conservative uh, and uh, politically slash socially liberal. Uh-huh. Um, because as I see this entire list of uh, networks that uh, are being tracked here, um, Fox News is not on here mm-hmm. at all. Uh, MSNBC is on the very lower end of the spectrum, but uh, CNN is definitely on the very top of it. Um, you know, some other interesting statistics uh, part of this. Um, Hollywood, not a huge presence of Asian American in general, but then Asian American females in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. However, uh, YouTube is an area that Asian American females dominate. And I actually, I love that. I love that because there is then this, there is an entrepreneurial characteristic about this uh, population that, you know, they're not just willing to um, settle for status quo, that they're willing to think outside the box and take what is readily available to them. 
Um, certainly, I've uh, I, I've had the chance to uh, follow a, a couple people on YouTube. Um, one of them was is a video gamer, um, and again, she has like over three hundred thousand subscribers, which is pretty unusual, I would think, kind of to uh, in that demographic of video game users to to see a female. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I sure. Just seem it just uh, you know, again, not that uh, I don't personally see a lot of media around the the video gaming these days but it seems like if you were to have a room of people video gaming that usually it's not females but yeah it, it's not a it's not a, a, a predominantly female um uh, industry right uh, but maybe again that's kind of where at least in this particular case this girl has found a little bit of a niche mm-hmm. um you know there was another uh, person that they mentioned on, or there another person now this is a male though but um he he's a SC graduate, uh, Freddie Wong, um, and he has a huge following. And he he does all these short videos. So anyhow, there's a huge presence of Asian Americans, fe- uh, Asian American females uh, on on YouTube. Um, the the number of people who practice, uh, you know, going back to yoga, the number of people who practice some form of yoga in America has go- grown from 20 million in 2012 to over 36 million today. So. Hopefully, Kelly, this is starting to paint a picture of where Asian American women, um, you know, how they can be viewed, let's say specifically in the automotive industry. Again, uh, healthy living, um, he- uh, just in general, a healthy lifestyle. They're fiscally conservative, but they're very much uh, brand familiar. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, your, your husband, Filipino, yep. uh, you were more or less you should you're not raised but you've been exposed to it would you agree with some of these characterizations of uh of asian american females yeah i I think from from what i know anyway and and i read this uh this article that you're referring to as well that um you know it's kind of like they're um like i said they're willing to go after what they want they know what they want so they're it sounds like they're more decisive than i personally am um (laughs) (laughs) um and, and so I, I think kind of where you're going in terms of the, the automotive industry is that um, there's there's a way to, I'm going to say even target, but I, I guess gear things towards, you know, Asian American females, um, given their lifestyle, knowing that they're not going to come in and just take, you know, whatever the first offer is that, um, you, know, you know, they're coming in for a particular product and or a particular price. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um so uh, just another quick statistic here, too, um, just quoting from this uh, case study of the 32 percent of Asian American women who are married to someone of a different race or Asian uh, ancestry. The majority of these women are married to non-Hispanic whites. Um, and then there is actually another reference here, too, of how if you're a, a, an Asian female in between the ages of uh, or if you're under 35, you're, and you were U.S. born, there's a small likelihood that you are married. Hmm. If you're foreign born under 35, then you, there's a greater likelihood that you are married. That makes sense. Um, so, it, 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 and then most uh, of the uh, Asian American uh, foreign born immigrants are coming from China first, India second, and the Philippines third. Um, so anyhow, this, this hopefully starts to kind of paint a picture of how you start to target Asian American females. Um, I, th- you know, in my experience, having uh, met face to face with uh, Asian American female car buyers, uh, they are certainly um, very, um, uh, um, you know, the modest and 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 th- if anything, they don't put up a guard as much as most people would do. I mean, they they kind of present open and, you know, they're, they're very transparent about their intentions and are willing to, you know, play nice with you. Or they're almost, they're not trying to play a game. They're just trying to go in, you know, and let them know exactly what they're looking for and either they're going to get it or they're not. Yeah, that's right. And 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 to that end too, it, um, it's only then when you do start talking about price that, uh, you know, this almost goes back to the, the marshmallow test. Are you familiar with the marshmallow test? I'm not. Um, the marshmallow test is, uh, it's, a, it's actually a pretty famous study. It's uh, done over a period of 40 years where they gave a kid 
um, a treat, in this case a marshmallow, and they told the kid, well, you can have this, you can have one marshmallow now, or if you wait 20 minutes, you can have two marshmallows. And so um, the, the study ends up kind of more focusing on the kids that wait and they take two marshmallows because then at the end of the day, these are also the kids that, again, it, it was a study over 40 years. When they grow up, these are also the, 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 the kids that became a little bit more successful, who were a little bit more financially successful specifically. Delayed gratification, you're willing to you know, kind of wait to get to a better result. That's right. Delayed gratification is exactly right. So it that actually reminds me of Asian American females because, yeah, they actually are not willing. I mean, they're almost like great poker players, right? They're not willing to, even though they know what a good deal is, even though they are good negotiators, even though they have the money, you know, a salesperson can do everything they can to position this entire car deal, this package deal to them, but yet that female's probably still going to say no, or at least delay the gratification, you know, 24 hours, 6 hours, 12 hours. Um, you think it's easier for them to walk away? V- yeah. I mean, and, and, and again, not in, it's almost like they're not even deceptive about it. They're like, there's no, like, ill intentions on their end. It's just, it's, it's almost like how. But it, it's funny. It's almost like it's, I don't want to say unintentional, but it is intentional. Like, do, do you think the... The goal is to say, like, I'm going to walk away because I'm going to come back when you're willing to give me the right price. But yet they're not trying to do it to play a game necessarily. They're just not going to buy the car if it's not the right. Yeah. And actually, I would even say that a lot of them, you know, and I guess first off, there there is a small minority of women that will come in themselves to buy the car. Right. Which. Um, You know, again, when you look at some of these statistics, knowing the fact that um, a lot of these U.S. born Asian American females under the age of 35 are not married, um, you know, there is a small percentage of them that do come in by themselves. Uh, And then when they do come in by themselves, yeah, they're again, they're 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 just willing to either, you know, go home and, and maybe talk to somebody, talk to their parents, talk to a friend, talk to a sibling um, before making a decision. And they're not they're they're not willing to or they don't they don't want to renegotiate right it's I, i'm not having to get on the phone with them later on in the day and find out oh hey well what do you think of that price and for them to say oh that price wasn't good enough no it's always just they just kind of need a, they just need a little bit of time to digest it all and then they usually they they usually do end up coming back and you know buying for whatever you know whatever that final negotiated price was earlier. Do you think this is the type of thing that car dealerships are, you know, as they start gathering customer information and data? Um, you know, I, I don't know how you would determine this yet, but are these the types of things that the dealerships are looking at? And then, you know, whether it's trying to use their advantage or just being knowledgeable of the fact that, you know, an Asian American female coming in may have a different tactic than, you know, a uh, uh, white male. Well, I, I definitely believe that, um, you know, for for dealerships, Asian American females, this presents a good opportunity if you're able to properly target them. This presents a good opportunity for, for a dealership to, you know, come out with very fair deals, right? Like, I don't, you don't, ha- you're not, a, a, I don't think a dealership is ever going to have to constantly target this segment of buyers and constantly uh, go, you know, significantly under invoice in order to make a deal. And again, because the characteristics of these buyers are that they're price conscious, but they're but they're more brand familiar. So, you know, if anything, that would that would be the one thing I would almost want to find out. I mean, in hindsight, this is kind of one thing I'd want to do myself now is that, you know, a, a person coming into an Audi store, Oh, how is it that you learned about Audi? Oh, my parents back in China have an Audi. Well, okay. You know, the same way if somebody asks you, hey, what do you do for a living? And you're an attorney. Okay, that's kind of a sign for a salesperson. Okay, this person has money. Uh, This Asian American female telling me that their parents have an Audi back home in China. Okay. Tells you that they're, they're, they're coming in for a reason and they're probably already happy with the brand they had a bad experience, they wouldn't even be there. That's right. And so, you know, then therefore, then there's other things that you can make presumptions on with regards to um, their income. Uh, again, according to the study here, um, 
Asian American households have an average income of one hundred and five thousand dollars. That's great income. Right. Right. So obviously, again, for, you know, specifically Asian American females, they're not grinders, probably like they're partners are Asian American males usually those are the grinders mm-hmm. um, but Asian American females you know they're again they're willing to come in and you know it, especially if there's an experience that's catered to them so uh, another thing the study points out is the fact that there is a high ownership of, of mobile devices right and then couple that with the fact that they're also um, uh, you know there's a lot of uh, Asian American females that uh, are YouTube creators I think this kind of presents a, an, an opportunity to target these women um, in such a way that, you know, it, it, it caters to, to, their, to their lifestyle, to their behavior. So, for instance, it might be nice then to um, have some kind of video uh, talk, you know, I don't know, how a yoga mat can fit into a trunk, put that on YouTube, and then, you know, you... Let, let run some uh, Facebook tar- uh, run some Facebook campaigns run some YouTube or uh, AdWord campaigns on that and yeah you could probably track and you could probably see a lot of Asian American females watching that and right I would think those are the types of things that you know uh, when you're you're creating commercials for dealerships that you're trying to think of who your target audience is and what are the things that would appeal I food is always on my mind so I thought you were going to go with the direction of like when you walk into a dealership that they have like the healthy food options as opposed to like here's you know all the chocolates and the you know snacks that Although, you can have uh, yeah, while you're more, more like the bakery items but that would be awesome actually uh for a dealership to all of a sudden have like a, a section where the food is actually healthy right like some uh you know packaged fruits and vegetables or I don't know I mean even McDonald's is doing it these days right where they're replacing apples and hmm. the happy meals uh, I would think that dealerships could and certainly afford to have some healthy food options. So the top industries of employment for Asian American women are healthcare, uh, professional scientific and tech services, arts, entertainment, and recreation, retail trade, and educational services. Um, the overwhelming um, industry that these uh, Asian American women are involved in uh, are healthcare. Uh, I can s- speak to this legitimately that nursing, big industry, uh, yep. that there's a lot of uh, healthcare um, Asian American women involved in. Um, Ed, you were gonna say something? No, I just, I agree. So I think that actually presents an opportunity. I know that there's lots of um, dealerships that like to partner with hospitals, but sometimes those partnerships are also very, um, shallow in a sense of it's you know shallow might not be the right word but it's it's a uh, like surface level They're it's not. very surface level right it's like okay let's just have our names paired together uh donate some money here and there and then hopefully that's good enough for uh there's for, for a, a relationship and attraction to be developed but i'll tell you what you partner with the hospital and you're able to do something that targets the the nurses Maybe there's maybe. money to be so made something there. Something else, no? yeah, something else there. Um, let's see. What are some other interesting statistics here? Um, so, uh, uh, yeah. So, if you live in California, New York, or Texas, 75 percent of all Asian American females reside in those uh, three states. Um, the the median age or the mean age of all Asian American females is 36 years old. Um, again, 55% of them are married. Uh, 59% are foreign born and 41% are U.S. born. 78% speak English well. Average household income, $105,000. Uh, average household size is 2.92. These are households that do have money. I'm sorry, not money. They they have they have families. Mm-hmm. Um, so certainly, then you know the cars that you want to be able to target with them, sedans, SUVs. Um, I think one of the things that uh, I have experienced uh, in working with Asian American females, uh, again, cars aren't such a big hot item for them, um, but certainly, th- you know, th- it, it, they. They will enjoy it if you teach them. 
That is a skill, though, that not all people are going to be well-versed in. Say more about that. What do you mean if, if you teach them, meaning if they have kind of an acquired taste for enjoying cars? Uh, no, you, you, it's, it's like you have, to, you have to almost show them the proper way to operate a car hmm. uh, in a sense of, okay, so, um, you know, let's say going on a test drive, for instance. Look, when you're coming on to, I mean... This is actually going to sound pretty. Uh, uh, I'm going to stereotype uh, these Asian American females, but and I don't mean to, I didn't even mean to do this, but you know, getting onto a highway. Look, uh, this is a car that actually has a very strong engine, in it, so you can, you know, put the car from drive to the sport mode, and then you can get this big boost. And something as little as that, because a lot of times, uh, uh, in my experience, these Asian American females. They're, they just put the car in drive and they don't really touch anything else about the, the transmission and the engine. So then when you show them that there's like kind of this other quote unquote gear in the car, that's kind of you're educating them about the car and they actually are very excited about that. Got it. So it makes a difference, you know, learning something else unique about the car that would excite them that otherwise. I mean, because it, it, it feels like where we're going is that, again, if a lot of it is brand or comfort or they're going in knowing kind of what car they want that it's like, you know, they may get more excited about it, but does it really move them closer to buying the car? Yeah, and, and I think to this point, too, um, as it also states in the study, uh, a lot of Asian American females are educated. So then they do seek out, um, uh, you know, being, uh, you know, they, they, they kind of seek out this professor-student relationship, right, where when they do go visit a dealership, if you can instruct them, if you can educate them on the car, you're going to come across more favorable to them because this is the culture and the behaviors that they're used to. So, you know, in hindsight, that actually makes sense now. Like when I am telling them that you can t- you can put the car from drive to sport mode and get extra boost in the car. And again, you can see kind of they light up that, oh, wow, this is interesting. So that's kind of the whole education that I'm talking about in which I, I just don't think there's a lot of uh, salespeople, service advisors out there that are willing to do that. And maybe it's just because they don't understand it either. And I would say that it's really important in any case that, you know, as we kind of keep coming back to these, you know, this uh, same thoughts around customer service and customer experience. Like when I get in a car, I want to know all that, you know, I want to ask questions and I want someone to be able to answer it. If they kind of just get in and, you know, they're talking about, you know, their family or something random. I'm like, no, tell me about the car. Like I'm here for the car. And so I, I do think it gives you a sense of comfort um, uh, when the person that you're with is knows their product. Well, I guess it's then in, in this particular case right now where this is a little bit more gender related. Um, now, this, is this in the times where it's just you or are you with your husband? Um, I guess it's been both. Um, you know, and it's interesting though, because if I'm out looking for the car, then I'm the one driving it and my husband's in the back seat. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I guess it just depends where the conversation goes, but I like to actually start asking questions. You know, I don't know if other people are more, in, depending on the person, they're more inclined to just drive the car and they just want to feel it. Mm-hmm. Um, but especially if it's not a brand that I'm familiar with uh, or a particular car that I'm familiar with, then I want to know more about it and what I'm getting into. Yeah. And so... I, I think this just takes me back to when, you know, Asian American females, they, they, they're, they're educated, they have a great income, um, they're very price conscious. If, if you're able to understand these elements of this uh, buying population, there's, I mean, there's money to be made. And, and, and certainly these types of buyers are willing to uh, engage in this buying process with you uh, willingly. Um, of course, you can't rush the process with them either. Um, so, I don't know. I, I thought this was a good study. I, I, I like this study here, actually. Uh, again, it's, the, it's, it's from Nielsen. It's Asian American women digitally fluent with an intercultural mindset. Uh, if you have the chance, take a look at it um, and uh, read about it. And then certainly, uh, if you are in California, New York, and Texas, Look to start targeting these Asian American females, and you will probably see a difference in your bottom line uh, in the car business. Yeah, pay attention to your consumer always, I I would say. But yeah, especially when you know these particular demographics have a a way of doing business. Excellent. Uh, Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Wisco Weekly Podcast. We'll be back next week. 
as always, rate, review, and subscribe. Um, and Kelly, are you doing anything fun uh, coming up here over the weekend? Until next week? Uh, let's see. I know. I just got to figure out where the week is going. I don't think we have any plans. We're trying to find uh, a way to get get the kids up to the snow. They've never been. So just thinking about uh, maybe a trip up to Big Bear or one of the mountains to do a little sledding. Excellent. Well, the weather's been nice and cold around here, so it should be good. Cold for California. Cold for California. <laughs> I know this. Okay, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. As always, appreciate it. Uh, and please send us uh, any questions or comments uh, through Facebook. Uh, find us at Wisco Weekly Pod.